y'all. Welcome to Sweet Tea and Butterflies. Today we are doing another one of our Just a, Our Imagination uh, Challenge collaborations. And I am really excited. I love these uh, challenges. They um, make me think outside the box and make me come up with some different ideas and different projects than I normally would. So, what are our challenge items this uh, this month? Well, we have to use a mouse trap, spoons. I chose plastic spoons because couldn't find anything else to work with it that uh, spoon wise or any other ideas, and clothespins. So, stay tuned and let's see what I come up with. Let's get crafting. Our hosts for this month's Just Our Imagination Challenge is Rustic and Lace DIY, Kathy Jo DIYs, and our guest host is The Busy Housewife. Please go check out um, their channels as well. The link for the full playlist of everybody's um, videos that are in this challenge will be in the description box below. Uh, just go show them some love because we've got a fabulous group of um, very talented crafters and it, it's just been a pleasure being able to do these collaborations with all of them and seeing what everybody comes up with with all of uh, with their creations. Uh, every month we have three challenge items and some of them are really challenging. Some of them are challenging to find at times. Um, this one, I didn't have a whole uh, a whole lot of challenge with, um, as far as coming up with an idea. I did have a challenge trying to find the mouse traps. Um, then I realized that I had bought a pack of mouse traps. So for this first DIY, I'm using the clothespins and I am kind of going back <clears throat> to a throwback to um, uh, an item that my aunt, my great aunt, used to make when I was a kid. <clears throat> now she made these um, as pin cushions and you know I did I chose not to do that because I do a lot of tiered tray. Uh, decor items and whatnot and I thought that this would make an absolutely adorable type riser for one of the tier trays but you absolutely could um, turn this into a pin cushion as well you just need to take some fabric and some foam make a cushion to put on the the seat where you can use it for a pin cushion so here I'm um, I I can't remember exactly how many Clothes pins. I, I meant to go and count how many were missing out of the pack before I started the editing and the voiceover, and I forgot. I do know that I took, I believe, 10 of them to um, where I glued them together, and then I have at least 10 um, half pieces. But I think I had to grab a, I think I had to use a couple extra of the half pieces. And I had one half left over when I was done. But you can see here that after I glued all of the, the ones that I needed glued together, um, I took and I took two of the glued together pieces and glued them on top of one of the half pieces as you can see here and then now it comes time to um, put the supports for the arms on and those I've done um, I, I inserted those or attached them in one of the little grooves of the clothespin on each side 
as you'll see here. And I am using mostly wood glue with a couple dots of hot glue just to try to get a little bit of instant hold so that they weren't falling over and I didn't have to sit there and fold them for um, a long period of time to keep them in place. Now you're going to do two of the um, of the bottom pieces with the arm supports on them. And you want to check as you're going through the, the project, you want to check and make sure that everything lines up just right on there. Uh, I will say this, um, this is the first time I've made one of these and I was kind of trying to follow a tutorial while I was recording it. But uh, I will say that mine came, my first one, this one came out just a little bit wonky because somewhere in there I had something that wasn't quite lined up. And you'll see here um, that the first time I put the Closed pin across the top I had it sticking out on each side and I had to go back and adjust it so you uh, for the top of the arm you need it to be just like I've got it here and you're going to do that on each side now I'm putting one of the supports that's going to attach the two um, on the back and I'm using a little bit of wood glue and a little bit of hot glue. And this, this particular step, I had a little bit of challenge with, because um, it, it was kind of wobbly and it wasn't sticking as well as I had hoped it would. Um, I don't know if I just didn't have enough hot glue on it or what and I also originally glued it down just um, a hair lower on one side than the other so I had to take it apart uh, take it off and scoot it up redo it but I think this is where um, I ended up going wrong or I ended up just a little bit wrong but you know this one's going to be used for me uh, for my two See, I, I'm kind of struggling with trying to get it to stay on there. I had to add a little bit more glue. Right about here is where I decided to leave well enough alone and quit messing with it um, with that particular bracket so that the glue might really uh, set up but you can see here you're looking that it's a little bit off and I think that's exactly where I went wrong with mine being a little off so now I'm putting on the front bracket to kind of, uh, support beam bracket whatever you want to call it <clears throat> and um, that one I think I had a little less trouble with that one than I did the, the back one so if you redo this project make sure that your your things are nice and lined up and straight where one's not tilted back further than the other one I honestly don't know how my aunt did this without hot glue. She used um, regular glue and, well, I don't know how she did that. <laughs> it's not 
lot of projects which uh, in the circumstances is easy to use um, regular glue without having to hold it in place. So now I'm taking and extending the back and another close pin on the back. And what you want to do is you want the bumps facing forward. The flatter uh, side of the close pin will be on the back. You want it on the side that only has like the little spot where another support um, piece across the lower part of that and then up toward the top too and those I think I put those with the bumpy sides back you can do it either way on those it's really uh, it the finished product looks like it um, would be more complicated than it is and it's really not an overly complicated process it's pretty simple to do and you know if you're using all hot glue then it's you know it's gonna go even even better but I like the wood glue for the permanent hold um, to sometimes hot glue can break down pop loose whatever so I like to use a little bit of the wood glue for the permanent hold and you know just dots of the hot glue just for an instant hold until the wood glue sets up and here I'm trying to kind of space out um, for my back of my chair and those um, will be with the bumpy sides forward so you have more of a decorative look um, facing forward and I have seen these with um, with the clothes pins that are glued together um, I've seen people do the the backs with those instead of just this uh, half So the backing of your chair is kind of kind of where you can get creative <clears throat> and then looking looking for tutorials um, for how to put this together um, I ran across several other neat clothespin um, furniture quote <laughs> ideas that I will probably be um, making some of because they were super cute and all of them would work for a tiered tray um, riser or you know decor piece so look for those videos in the future and here I'm just taking I put some wood glue on the back brace and I'm using hot glue on the front now you want your the flat sides up and the thinner side toward or the thinner end toward the back. You want the thicker end of it toward the front on these on the the seat of the chair. My husband uh, got you know had gotten up or when he got home I guess noticed you know the completed chair sitting there he's like did you make that how did you make that <laughs> he knows he knows I'm crafty but sometimes he just he's in disbelief at some of the stuff that that I come up with and this happened to be one of them he he was like that's kind of cool He didn't even realize at first that I had done it with clothespins. He he was just he was like, how how'd you make that? How, 
you know, what, where'd you get the wood to make it or whatever, and I told him it was closed. And there, as you can see, it's a little wonky, but like I said, so am I. <laughs> so it fits for me. Now that I've done one, um, you know, I think I can probably put it together a little bit better um, so that I can offer them for sale on, on my website as well. But I mean, what's, there's nothing more farmhouse than a old rocking chair out on the front porch, you know, an old weathered rocking chair. Actually, I should say there's nothing more farmhouse house or southern because, I mean, come on, we got Cracker Barrel and you walk into a Cracker Barrel and the whole front porch has rocking chairs sitting, you know, so. It's a good little farmhouse uh, thing there. Love it <clears throat> if you'd follow us on uh, social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, TikTok. I always forget to name that one. And we also have our own social um, chat uh, group page on our website. So the links for all of that will be in our description box. And we hope to see you on our social medias as well. So for project number two... I'm going to take these round discs, and this is the spoon project. Um, I'm using the Waverly Antique Wax, and that's what I used for the chair, too, was the Waverly. And I'm going to give a good coat on just one side and the edges of these discs. The other side, the, um, the discs won't be visible or seen so I didn't I didn't do those <clears throat> here's this um, here I'm trying to figure out how many spoons I'm gonna need and in the end I think I ended up kind of half guesstimating because I didn't want to cut I didn't have the cutters with me to cut them down did with those um, I took some brown paint and just painted the spoon portion of it and it doesn't have to be a great um, full coverage coat of paint on these this is just so the white of the spoon doesn't show through when you um, when you wrap it but I painted um, both sides just the spoon portion and a little bit back on the the handle not much I did this to all of them and as, and as you can see um, out came the, the big cutters my miter shears. I cut all the handles um, off of the spoons and left left a little bit of the handle there because I need it to be able to glue it on here. You can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of trying to place them and get them spaced out appropriately, which. I think uh, with these I didn't quite get those perfect either. It's a tiny bit wonky but a little less noticeable on the wonky than what the chair was. But hey, like I said, it fits me. I'm wonky. I'm a little off. I don't deny it. I embrace it. So what I did was I took and glued all of them and then I ran, pounded it with uh, hot glue over all of the... Um, the handles of the spoons in there just to make sure that they you know stayed in place real good and 
now here I am wrapping around the, the spoon. Of course, my phone needs to go off when I'm doing voiceover. It's got to love it. So I'm, I'm using the thinner um, twine that you get from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to wrap each of these spoons. Um, as you get closer to the end of the spoon, the, um, the more tapered end of the spoon, it becomes necessary to kind of um, glue it a little bit for each wrap to keep it in place. And by the time I got toward the end, I had found a little bit quicker, more efficient way of doing that. But you can see here, I'm just uh, wrapping it and just getting it um, until I fill in the whole thing and then I'll trim it off. And uh, that's not where I trimmed it off. I'll trim it off and start on the next one. I'm not going to make you watch me wrap all of the, the spoons that are on here. So by the magic of video here in just a few minutes, you'll see as I come to the last one and I'm doing the last one. And I put that one in because it shows the, um, the process that I ended up using as I went through and figured out a better way to do it. So for this uh, last one, I had found that as I'm wrapping, when I get toward the end of the, the spoon there, that if on the back, I would run like a little bead of blue, wrap the trunk with wine, and then I'd put a dot on each side in the front, and then make my wrap. And that seemed to help it stay in place and not get, uh, not try to slide around. As I was going through, um, I realized that when I put that other uh, disc on there, you're still going to kind of be able to see in between the spoons, and I didn't want it, um, the mess in the middle to show, so I took some of the thicker twine that I had <clears throat> and wrapped it around the petals and went, <coughs> pardon me, went one way with it. Um, and then I wrapped around and then reversed because I because I was doing over and under, and it just uh, I guess the number of petals I have on this flower didn't allow it to end up going over the you know so I backtracked and went over and under so that I had it on both sides of each of the spoons. 
if that makes any sense. And then <clears throat> I got a little bit sloppy with the glue when I was putting the glue on there for uh, securing this down, but it's not going to show in the end. I took and um, I had have some of the little half wood beads that I used a piece of painter's tape and stuck them on the, the painter's tape so that I could paint them without having them slide all over the place. As you can see here, I'm just kind of sticking them on there. And this hack works really well um, for painting small things or whatever that you, you know, you don't want to paint your fingers because you're, you know, trying to hold it and paint and end up with paint all over your fingers. This works really well if you just stick some uh, painter's tape down or even masking tape would work. And I used um, Waverly's Cashew to paint these because I wanted just um, at least a little bit of lighter color on the on this project I didn't want it to I needed something that would kind of pop a little bit so don't um, don't forget that the uh, link for everybody's uh, videos, the playlist uh, where you can access everybody's videos will be in the description box. And, you know, go through and watch all of them. Um, this is an amazing group of very creative um, and talented ladies. Uh, and I really enjoy doing these collabs with them. Um, Kathy Jo, she is a hoot. Um, she is as southern as southern can be, and I just get, I get cracked up just watching her, her videos. Um, she's hilarious, and Brenda is just absolutely so sweet, and they're both very talented. I, I love the projects that they come up, come up with, so don't forget to go watch everybody's, uh, videos in the playlist, show them some love to the ones that <clears throat> we would love for you to subscribe to all of them, we really but I know that sometimes, you know, when you're watching YouTube or whatnot, you'll watch a couple of videos and some may not be, you know, your thing, your vibe or whatever, and that's okay, but if you're your vibe, if all of us are your vibe, please subscribe to all of them, it helps our channels grow, don't forget to like and leave us some comments too. Obviously, it's a flower, but if you haven't guessed what I'm doing with it, um, you'll see, you see. <laughs> I've got three of the bigger wood beads, and I'm going to glue those on the bottom. And this is going to be another little decorative hair tray right here. It's decorative enough on its own. If, uh, you know, if the season or, or whatever doesn't, you know, you don't have enough pieces to have one to put on top of it. It's, it, it's decorative enough that it stands on its own. It's got a neutral vibe to it, so it'll kind of fit pretty much any, you know, all year round that you can use it as a, a riser. And I did not properly space out my beads, as you can tell. Um, it's not like, it's not 
extremely obvious and obnoxious, but I decided to just cover up that little oopsie with the space in there um, with a twine bow, which just adds character to it anyway, so it was no big deal. And there you have a cute little riser for a tiered tray, or even, you know, on your mantle or anywhere you want to put it. Now moving on to project number three, <coughs> pardon me, and I just realized that um, I did not make transition graphics general ones, those were still my Christmas ones. <laughs> well, I guess I know what I'm doing when I get done with this. So. My colleagues in this uh, collaboration um, had a real difficult time with these mouse traps and disassembling them. Now, the two pieces that I took off of mine came off pretty easy. Um, I in intentionally left the, um, the spring part on here for a reason. Um, now, that part might be more challenging to pull out of there, but uh, <laughs> you will probably see some um, frustration <laughs> in my colleagues as they're taking these um, apart to work with. So for this one, um, I used the cashew again and just painted it front and back all around the sides. And I am taking and using a couple of bunches of twine to make a twine flower to put on there. Now this um, this project I did not when I was doing it I didn't I could not for the life of me find my little magnets. I have them somewhere. I have a bunch of them somewhere and I couldn't find them when I was uh, filming but my intention with this is to put a magnet on the back of it and it can be used um, you know to clip a picture to to put on the refrigerator as you know like a refrigerator magnet to hold the pictures of your kids or, or um, another thought that I asked might not work for everybody have a metal I will probably make several of these, but I'd love to hear the, the um, your ideas. As you can see, and I took one of those half beads. 